What we're going to do with this video is we're going to review uh, the concept of scientific notation that you had known, you've, you've done it for, I think you might have done it in sixth grade, maybe a little bit in fifth grade. And we're going to take that concept and review that, but we're also going to take what we've learned so far about negative exponents, negative bases, and apply that uh, a new uh, application for scientific notation. Um, and then tomorrow in class, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how do we do operations with scientific notation. Specifically, how do we multiply or divide two numbers that have scientific notation? Before we do that, though, we have to figure out um, we have to figure out how to actually represent these numbers the correct way. So, um, before we get started, let's look at some proper rules for scientific notation. Um, you see, it sometimes the scientific notation written the wrong way. This is the the way we write it, uh, a standard way so that everybody is doing the same thing. First rule is that uh, you notice two things I highlight here. The leading number has to be bigger than 1, okay, bigger than 1, um, but less than 10, right? It can equal 1, but then, you know, why write 1 times 10 to the something, right? Just write 10 to the something. So it can either be equal to 1 or bigger than 1, but it has to be less than 10. So if you write like um, 83 times 10 to the 4th, that's wrong. It needs to be 8.3. Um, a lot of you you'll, you will see it written that way sometimes, but um, if you're looking at scientific journals, um, it should be written this way. Again, not saying it's everybody does it the exact same way, but this is the proper scientific notation. Um, the next rule is obviously the other part of the scientific notation that you multiply by some power of ten. So let's look at a couple examples then. If I have 57 million, notice where my decimal is. It's the very end. And I want to move it so that my leading number is between 1 and 10. So my leading number is going to be 5.7. And then it's going to be times 10 to the something. Well, the 10 to the something, the power of 10 that I multiply by, is going to be how many times I move this decimal to go from the end of the number to make it 5.7. So if I do this, you might have you called this shroops, or your teacher might have had a different name for this. I don't know. You'll notice we move the decimal seven times. So a different way that I could write this, notice I put an equal sign there. This is 5.7 times 10 to the seventh. If I actually multiplied that out, I would get 57 million. Okay, 10 to the seventh uh, is a one with seven zeros after it. If I multiply that by 5.7, I get uh, 57 million that you see there on your screen. Notice I'm moving the decimal to the left. So I'm kind of taking this number and I'm, uh, I'm crunching it down. All right, which means I've got to multiply. My power of 10 has to be a really big number. Okay, so if I, I start with a really big number, my power of 10 has to be a really big number. Keep that in mind for later. So looking at my next problem here, uh, 9,876,000. I want to move the decimal. So again, it's between 1 and 10. That's going to be 9.876. Careful that you're not just getting rid of the zeros. You don't want to just get rid of the zeros. You want to move it the entire way so that your decimal makes your leading number between 1 and 10. So now we have to figure out what power of 10 we need. Well, that's just going to be however many times I move the decimal. We're moving it 6 times. So it's 9.876 times 10 to the 6th. Going the other way then. You notice we have this, this really small, this really 1.35. Okay, We want to expand that into the scientific notation here. Okay, so if we expand that into the scientific notation, I'm going to take that 1.35, okay, and you'll notice I'm going to move that five spaces, and 10 to the fifth is a really big number, a really big number, so that we're going to end up with a really big number as well. So it's, this is the same thing as if I were to do 1.35 times a 1 with five zeros, I get 135,000. My next number down here is negative 2.01. So my overall number is going to be negative here. Notice it's not the exponent that makes this negative, right? We talked about that yesterday or in class. Um, it's the, the base that's going to be negative here, so therefore the whole number is negative. Um, so negative 2.01, and I'm going to multiply that by 10 to the fourth. That's a 1 with four zeros. Now, the fast way to do that is just move my decimal. To, that, to the right four times. Okay, so if I'm writing it in standard notation, I'm going to move that decimal to the right to make that really big number. Okay? All right. Again, keep these rules in mind as we move on to a, another application of this. 
we can use scientific notation not only to represent really big numbers, but to represent really small numbers. Okay, you've, you've done all kinds of problems with the distance to the sun is 93 million miles and all that stuff. But there's there's other numbers that we need to represent. A lot of numbers in chemistry um, that are very very small. Okay. In fact, one number in chemistry is called Avogadro's number. Um, you're going to use that number a great deal throughout the entire course of the year. Ask some of your siblings who are taking chemistry right now. Um, so the question is, how would I represent those really, really small numbers? Well, if you think in class, what kind of exponents gave us really tiny numbers? What kind of exponents? Negative exponents. All right. So if I have a number, 0.0053, Keep in mind, I still have to have a leading number that's between 1 and 10, okay, less than 10. So my leading number is going to be 5.3 here. So notice my decimal now is moving to the right rather than to the left. That means I've got to have a negative exponent here because I've got a really small number. Think about it. If I multiply 5.3 by some power of 10, that power of 10 needs to be a really small number to make it a, a decimal. All right. So if I have a really small number that I want to write with scientific notation, it's the same process. Notice I had I had three swoops there. Okay. So that means my power of ten is three, but it's not positive three because that would be multiplying by a thousand. It's ten to the negative three because that would be multiplying by a decimal. All right. Take a look at the next example here. Uh, I'm going to move my decimal to eight point one one because that's between one and ten. And now all I have to do I have to write my my leading number in here. All I have to do is figure out what's my power of 10. I know it's going to be negative because I've got a small number, and I move it four times. So it's 8.11 times 10 to the negative 4. So let's look at it from the other direction then. Let's look at it if I have a, a, a scientific notation number, and I need to write it as standard notation. So my leading number is 1.9. I'm going to write that first. What I need to recognize right away, though, is if it's negative 5, my answer is not negative. My answer is very small. Now, if it's very small, think about what way we would need to move this decimal. I would need to move the decimal to the right, or I'm sorry, to the left, to make this work. Okay, I've got to move it to the left. If I move it to the right, I'm going to get a very, very big number, right? But remember, I'm multiplying by 10 to the negative fifth. So I'm multiplying by a decimal, so therefore my answer should be a decimal. So when you're doing these problems, think, am I going to get a decimal or am I going to get a big number for my answer here? One more example, 2.75. I'm going to write that down here instead of off to the side. 2.75 times 10 to the negative 3. Since it's negative, I need a decimal. I'm going to move it to the, right, to the left three times. And I end up with 0 0.00275. One thing I want you to notice the number of zeros is not the exponent here. Okay, The number of zeros is not the exponent. Notice I don't have three zeros in my second example. I don't have five zeros in my first example. It's The exponent is the number of times I move the decimal. Okay, So whether your, your exponent on the power of 10 is positive or negative, you need to make sure that you're moving the decimal the right amount of spaces here. So for your homework tonight, you're going to do these four problems on a separate sheet of paper. Um, so make sure you do these four. Um, first two, you're going to take those standard notation problems and change them to, or, I'm sorry, scientific notation, change it to standard. Um, the second two, you're going to take scientific notation and write it in standard notation. So make sure um, you're very careful with either what power of 10 you're writing for number three and four, or what type of number you're getting for number one and two. Good luck.